Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game to Come video, we're going to be discussing AMD's Infinity Fabric and also AMD's upcoming Ryzen processors. That's right, yet more rumors have surfaced over the past couple of days. Infinity Fabric, however, is going to be the first topic we're going to be going through because it is, without a question, the more complex of the two. So, Infinity Fabric, just to give you an understanding, is an overarching superset and can almost be thought of as a successor to hypertransport. Now, if you're not familiar with what hypertransport is, you can think of it as the AMD equivalent of FSB from Intel. Frontside Bus, or FSB, has been probably one of the more common terms that uh, anyone into tech has been uh, painfully familiar with, especially if, if you've been o overclocking at all. And that, of course, means that the FSB is used to connect the CPU to various other components on the motherboard. For example, the FSB will be the communication pathway to, let's say, the DRAM or the GPU, where data is sent once again back and forth. However, AMD are going to be changing things quite considerably with, with Infinity Fabric. And Infinity Fabric has many supersets. So, a, a, I'm sorry, a subset. For example, there is Coherent Fabric, which is a subset of Infinity Fabric. Now, what this basically means is that the designs themselves are going to be modular. This allows AMD to offer ASICs or their customers a choice on how their chips are going to be created and once again almost Lego-like in how they can slot those parts together. Using uh, coherent fabric as an example, we do know that it's going to be A, completely modular, and B, the bandwidth is going to scale from between 30 to 50 gigabits per second, or 512 gigabits per second with Vega. So, if you're, for example, creating a high-end network-based solution, which, let's say you're building server racks or perhaps compute oriented workstations and you need high-end uh, socks and high-end GPUs, you can start to actually couple those together along with the requisite network on-chip solutions and, well, have a very customizable, very powerful solution. Now, the reason this is very interesting is because it also cuts down development time, as well as, at least theoretically, improving the level of performance. In the past, theoretical levels of performance, for example, let's say, um, let's just use easy numbers, let's say you've got 50 gigabits per second um, theoretically available to a particular component, real world performance may be far short of that, it might be 10, 20, 30%, whatever the case, depending on either the task or the architecture itself. But now, thanks to Infinity Fabric, AMD are going to be able to fully utilize any DRAM available to both the SOC and the GPU. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this is kind of similar to what we're hearing from AMD when it comes to their various uh, changes with Vega, specifically the high bandwidth cache controller, where you can start farming out data to the CPU. And in fact, in an interview with Scott Wasson, I was told that this is primarily going to be aiming for high-end servers, but that technology will certainly start filtering down to lower performance parts as well. This means that not only do we get higher performance levels um, with the actual hardware, but turnaround and design for that. For example, let's say a, a customer comes to AMD and says, hey, we need to make a specific change to the hardware, it's going to be a lot faster. An example was given, and that is an on-chip network change early in the SOC design previously might have taken up to six months, but now it can be done in just a couple of hours. That is ridiculous when you think about the turnaround time and what this could mean for future consoles, future hardware. So, uh, what else do we need to know about this? Well, because it scales so well, Infinity Fabric is going to be a coherent implementation. This means, at least from what AMD's literature, literature is telling us, it is going to be fully cache coherent. So if you have multiple processors or multiple cores, be they CPU or GPU, it won't be a problem. 
they're going to be fully aware of one another and basically there's going to be no data errors there's going to be no um fighting over resources it should be pretty smooth sailing i guess the real question is how much difference will it make when we actually get the hardware in our pcs well we just don't know ultimately it could mean very little difference in terms of performance but it might me mean a big difference if you are a developer of hardware or if you are hoping for faster turnaround for for example new releases of console and theoretically subsequent chip revisions could also be a lot cheaper or easier for AMD to produce but as always we're just going to have to wait and see what happens and naturally if there is going to be any I, I guess the best word or best way of describing it is advantage of running let's say AMD's Vega processor with an AM4 motherboard and a Ryzen CPU like is there going to be any performance advantage well unfortunately we just don't know yet and I have a feeling we won't know for quite a number of months there have been a couple of murmurs here or there I've heard but they're so unsubstantiated and so kind of cloak and dagger I don't want to say that they're accurate and I've not reported them simply because you know at the end of the day there have been a couple of whispers on forums here or there with very 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 dicey um, sources so you know I guess we can just wait okay now we're gonna switch over to some rides and rumors these come courtesy of a Facebook uh, user I won't give his full name but first name is Rod and he sent me a couple of interesting leaks and they originate from a website by the name of chiphell.com so essentially uh, some users there who have given leaks in the past uh, so how much faith you want to put in these is down to you I'm a little bit doubtful but I'll go into why in just a moment they've said that Ryzen is going to launch in March the 4-core 8-thread model is going to happen in April sometime, but the exact release date is not given, of course. And the fastest version of the 8-core 16-thread may not be cheap. You're looking at between 580 to 720 US dollars. Now, it's a bit dicey with that because the fastest version is supposedly going to be a faster um, clocked version of the eight core model so in other words there's going to be two eight core models and supposedly and i stress that word it's going to be like i don't know like a super deluxe version so it's going to have higher base clocks and higher um maximum clock speeds if you're overclocking but all of this is unconfirmed by amd it's also been said that uh, the actual motherboard itself, I'm sorry, the actual platform itself is actually pretty far along. The BIOS is actually what's been slowing down the release. And whether that is something you want to pay attention to, I'm not sure. Because there have been those different revisions. Supposedly, um, I believe it was the A3 revision hit 3.9 gigahertz when it was being uh, turboed. When it was hitting turbo, rather. But then... Uh, Lisa Sue and a couple of other top execs at AMD asked for a respin and that's why they managed to get to 4 gigahertz because they just wanted that tiny bit of extra performance. So I'm not quite sure how long the chips have really been in production. The only reason I'm a bit dubious about these rumors is because we've heard a couple of times over including from AMD's Robert Halleck which we had an interview with that there would be a multiple Ryzen SKUs available at launch, but they were going to give more details later. Then again, that could theoretically mean the 8-core 16-thread model, both of them, and maybe a 6-core model as well. We just don't know. Ultimately, there is not enough solid information. There's a lot of rumours and conjecture. Another interesting one is that there is going to be a Meet the Experts webcast, which is going to be held um, on the 31st of January and it says speakers from Asus Gigabyte MSI join us for this month's meet the expert join them as they showcase the new AM4 motherboards built to support the two, two upcoming desktop chipsets for AMD Ryzen processors end quote while I admit that's not super newsworthy it does show that once again motherboard vendors are becoming increasingly confident in the products that they're actually going to be showing off Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.